short sale. This is kind of the buzzwords right now, short sale. Everybody's doing short sale. And what is short sale? It just means that you're selling the property for less than what's owed. And for most of us, that's, that's where we're at right now. You know, your property's worth less. Let's go to the next slide. Here's an example. All right, first mortgage, $200,000 first. They have a $50,000 second. House is only worth $175,000. This is very typical of what I see every day, if not worse than this, okay? So the idea is that you go out and you sell the property for $175,000. But to do that, you have to get the lender's approval to do that because they essentially own the house. And so you have to get them to say, okay, you can sell it, and then we're going to let you sell it, and then we get the proceeds. Generally, the second is going to get some very small amount, three, four thousand dollars of that, and then the, the mortgage, the first will get the rest of it. Again, because the first is in the better position. The second, if this goes through foreclosure, second gets nothing, and they know that, and so they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll take three thousand, go away. Um, so that's how the short sale works. Sounds great, right? There are some problems with the short sales. All right, let's go to the next slide. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is that it avoids foreclosure. It may prevent the deficiency from the lender coming after you. Um, the disadvantages, and this is my big problem, is there are potential tax, tax advantages from doing the short sale. Um, and then it may not prevent the deficiency, too. Um, and that's something I want to talk about. Let's go to the next slide. All right, avoids foreclosure. And, and this is, you're going to hear this a lot. It, may have a smaller impact on your scores, on your credit, if you do a short sale versus doing the foreclosure, okay? Because you don't have the public record. There's a public record section on credit reports that says foreclosure, that will pull your scores down. So you won't have that if you do either the short sale or the deep loop, okay? But it's not without its cost. They, the credit bureaus will treat a short sale as a settled debt. And again, if you've ever had any experience in this area, if you've got some credit cards that you owe $15,000 on, and you say, hey, I'll pay you $5,000 instead, and they say, great, they take the $5,000, that $10,000 is treated as a settled debt for your credit, for credit, uh, credit report. And that's the same thing that happens with a short sale. And so it's still going to ding your credit not quite as bad as the foreclosure but there is a cost to it, okay? Um, now, here's the other thing you're gonna hear too, is it may allow you to qualify for a new mortgage much quicker if you do the short sale versus having the foreclosure go through, all right? Now, for instance, conventional lenders generally will allow you, an conventional lender, but generally within two years after the short sale, you can qualify for a mortgage again. So again, they're still dinging you for doing it, but, it's five years for foreclosure and maybe longer. All right, so conventional lender, you know, not FHA, not the, the VA, it's, it's a regular conventional loan that most people are aware of. The FHA, on a case-by-case -case basis, is essentially treating uh, short sales as foreclosures, um, two years to three years for the FHA. So you don't get much of a benefit from FHA, but you certainly get one from conventional lenders. So again, that's an advantage. So if you're thinking down the road, I want to buy another house, it may be to your benefit to do the short sale instead of the foreclosure. Next slide. All right. Um, deficiency. Remember I said before, like with the Dean Lou, the primary goal of a short sale should be to get both lenders, if there's two, like the first and the second, or whatever lenders on there, to agree to not pursue you for a deficiency. Because you don't, and I, I guarantee you, if you don't do the short sale and get that agreement, and there's a second mortgage company, they are coming after you. They are going to sue you personally, maybe a year after after the foreclosure or after the transaction, but they're coming after you. And if it's a fifty thousand dollars second, what are you going to do? I mean, you'll have a judgment of fifty thousand dollars, and they're going to start doing bad things to you. So, absolutely must get an agreement from them that they're going to not pursue you for deficiency. Or have a plan that you're going to do a bankruptcy anyway, and then you don't care. But, you know, again, I've seen last couple months, I've seen several come across my desk where the lender's like, well, we'll let you do the short sale, but we're going to reserve our right to pursue the deficiency. Uh, no. How about no? You get nothing if we go through the foreclosure. You get zero 
how about taking three or four thousand dollars instead, and then you don't come after us? You know, and if you come after us, we're going to file bankruptcy anyway. Sometimes that helps when I do it because I'm calling. You know, I'm a bankruptcy attorney. Um, we're going to file bankruptcy if you don't do this deal. And, and I'm not using that as blackmail. I'm, I'm, that's what we're going to do. All right, so don't be very careful about signing these short sales unless they're going to let you off the hook. Okay, next slide. Here's my big, big problem with short sales. Taxes, the tax implications that can come from doing a short sale. And I find that sometimes people who are doing short sales, they kind of gloss over this whole thing. Oh, no, no, you'll be fine. Until you get the 1099 where you owe $50,000 extra because you had a short sale. All right, now let's talk about that. The Internal Revenue Service treats most canceled debt as income. So when I talked before about the $15,000 credit card example, and you settle it for five, you're going to get a 1099 from the credit card company for $10,000. Because that forgiven debt is treated as income by the IRS. Okay? And you've got to pay taxes on that. And depending on what your tax bracket is, that may be a significant debt. Same thing happens potentially when you do a short sale. Right? So let's go to our next slide. The short sale example we did before, right? You had a $200,000 first mortgage, you had a $50,000 second, and the house is worth $175,000. So let's say you sell it for $175,000 at a short sale, but you owe $250,000. And so theoretically, that $75,000 is treated as taxable income. And so you're like, hey, short sale, that sounds great. I'm going to avoid the foreclosure. You know, I can give you another house in a few years. Let's do it. But then you get a 1099 for $75,000. Whoa, you know, that might have doubled or tripled your income, and now you've got a big old tax liability. You know, um, So that's a problem. Be, be very careful about that. But let me show you how to get around that. Next slide. There are three exceptions to this issue. And the first one is what's called the Mortgage Debt Relief Act of 2007. Now, you're going to hear this from people who are helping you with your short sale. They're going to say, well, no, no, no. Um, Congress passed this law in 2007 that says that if it's your primary residence, you don't get taxed on it. I, I can't tell you how many realtors I've had in my office would be with our joint clients saying, no, no, that's OK. Uh, no, no, it's not. And because there are exceptions to this, okay? And there are important exceptions to this. Let's go to the next slide. First of all, it has to be your primary residence, your principal residence. It can't be an investment property. It can't be a second home. Many of my clients have multiple properties, I'm trying to do short sales on multiple properties, which clearly they don't own all of them as their principal residence. So um, first of all, it has to be your principal residence. If it's not, it's taxable. All right. And the second thing is, and this is where everybody falls down, the debt has to be what I call acquisition debt, which means it has to be used to acquire, purchase the property, construct the property, or substantially improve the property. So if you get you know, a refinance, you get a second mortgage, and you're putting a pool in, or you put a new roof on, or you're redoing your kitchen, that's all okay. So if it's your principal residence, and you're using it for those purposes, then there is no tax on it. It's an exclusion because of this act. But if it's not, then you're in trouble. For instance, let's going back to our example before, all right? $250,000, all right? We have the, let's go back one more. All right, $200,000 first mortgage, $50,000 second, and the sale price of one seventy-five. Let's say the $200,000 is the original acquisition mortgage. That's what you use to purchase the property with. And then later on, you got the 50000 second. But you use that to buy a new car, pay for college education, pay down some credit cards, go around a trip in the world. You know, you did a variety of stuff with it, but nothing for the house, all right? So if you go to sell this property at a short sale for one seventy-five, the 200000 is OK. That's OK. That's exempt because it's acquisition debt. The fifty thousand is not. So when you get your the ten ninety nine from the mortgage company because you did the short sale, that's fifty thousand dollars in income because you did the short sale. Again, depending on what your income bracket is, that can be a problem. All right. Um, so.
So be very careful about that. If it's if you fall in those categories, great. Do short sale. There's no, there's no problem. I think it's great. And I have advised many of my clients to do the short sale. Sometimes even if they are going to get hit with the tax liability because that's their only debt. And it doesn't make sense to put them in a bankruptcy or do anything else just because they have a little tax liability. They'd rather pay you know, five or ten thousand dollars in tax than have the bankruptcy. So, so it just depends on a case-by-case -case basis. But don't just jump on the short sale bandwagon thinking it's all great because sometimes it's not. Um, let's go to the next slide. All right. Apart from that exclusion with the act, you can also get out of the tax problem by filing bankruptcy or by being insolvent before you did the short sale. There's no clear case law on this, but this is my belief in the belief of others who do this, that you have to file the bankruptcy if you're going to do it prior to doing the short sale. Because once the bank or the mortgage company has forgiven the debt, then it's taxable income. If you discharge your debt prior to it being forgiven, there's no tax liability. Okay, because the bankruptcy code has a provision in it that wipes out the IRS code's provision about taxable income. So that's one way of doing it. Now, sometimes I'll have someone come in and say, gosh, you know, I really like my realtor. He's done a really great job for me, and I hate putting him in this out of the commission. He's spent a lot of time. Okay, let's follow bankruptcy. And then you can still do a short sale. It works. You know, that way everybody's happy. Um, I, you know, I like to be happy and work with everybody, um, but I'm primarily concerned about my clients. Okay, so think about that. The other is insolvency. If you get that 1099 from the IRS, there's a form that you can file along with your tax return that says, well, yeah, I know this happened, but I was insolvent at the time that it happened. And the IRS uses a very simple test for insolvency, which is your liabilities exceed your assets. And nowadays, that's pretty much everybody. Um, you know, because we used to have all the equity in the house, and that was all our big asset. But now, that would cover most people. So you may not have to file a bankruptcy if your liabilities exceeded your assets at the time that you bought, which may well be true. Okay? Um, let's go to the next slide. Final strategy, uh, and this is for you know, letting it go. If everything else that you've tried, which we're going to talk about in the next few slides, has failed, you, know, you just can't do a modification, you can't do a refinance, you can't do anything, it's going to happen. You're going to get the foreclosure. Okay? Um, if you have a small deficiency anyway, let's say you're all just about break even, you know, let it go. You know, you can't do the, you know, you can't find someone to do a short sale, you can't get it done. All right, let it go. Or if we're going to do the bankruptcy anyway at some point and you don't really, you know, we'll do the foreclosure for the bankruptcy and you solve all your problems at once, let it go. At the end of the day, the bank has to get it back somehow, and, and that's the process.